Hey everybody and welcome back to Busket Barn. Today I'm going to show you how I made this sign. Before I talk about how I did the carving, you should know that you can do this entirely by hand. I'll share some links to the videos in the description that show you how to do that. Because I'm a little lazy, I used a CNC machine to do all the carving for me. I started by loading an SVG file into the CNC and used a 60 degree V-bit to carve all the lettering in one pass. 10 minutes later and voila, a carved sign. Then I move over to the workbench to do a bit of sanding. To sand down the sign to prepare it for paint, we're gonna do a progressive sanding starting with a 100, then I'm gonna to go to 150, might stop there. 220 is pretty much all you need to go to. I do have a little piece of 320, so if I do get a little overzealous, I'll go ahead and use that. And then I've got a sanding block, which is great for getting in all of these little nooks and crannies within the lettering. And that's really all you need to do. Sandy by hand is really the way to go, especially with a small piece like this. If you do have an orbital sander, go for it. It's faster, but I just like to do it by hand. So let's sand this little guy. beautifully sanded piece of wood. Mwah. Perfection. Next part of my trick is to seal the wood with a protective finish. Now, you can use a bunch of different types of lacquers or sealers. You wanna make sure that you choose a one that's appropriate for either outdoors or indoors, depending on where you're using the sign. I'm trying out this polyacrylic, and this is by Minwax. It says that it has a fast drying finish, so I can kind of speed up this process since we're gonna be doing two coats of this product, and then we're gonna do, be doing a couple steps with the painting process. So I wanna make sure I have something that can dry very quickly. Now, if you skip this step of using a sealer, we can't do the trick later on, and believe me, it's gonna save you some time. Now, before you get too over eager and just start spraying, make sure to use protective eyewear and a super sexy painting mask. Now let's, now let's get to it. Paint an even coat over the entire piece, making sure to get inside the carved lettering at different angles to seal inside all of the nooks and crannies. Seriously, why do I keep on saying nooks and crannies? This is important to get a nice crisp edge to your lettering as it prevents the paint that we'll be spraying later on from bleeding through the grain past the lettering. It also allows you to do a cool trick when you get to the painting in the event that you overspray your paint when filling the lettering. I'll show you that in just a minute. While spraying a sealer before painting may seem like an extra step, it is the easiest method for painting lettering. With any kind of sealer, you'll want to sand between coats. This is because sealers tend to dry slowly, and you can get dust particles that create nibs that prevent you from getting a nice, smooth surface. Now because I have a fast drying product and I'm painting over the top of it, it's debatable whether you need to do this. But because this video is for you and not me, let's do this the right way, shall we? You only need to use a fine grit sandpaper, very gently over the surface of the piece and inside the carved lettering. Then clean it again with a microfiber cloth to get the dust off before the next coat. I'll spare you the time of watching me put on the second coat, but know that it was exactly the same process as the first time. To make this piece pop, I'm going to paint the background red. If you're looking for a natural wood background, simply skip this step and move on to the next one where I show you how to paint the inside of the lettering. Once the paint is dried, we'll do some prep before spraying the inside of the lettering. For this step, we'll use some frog tape to mask off as much of the background as possible, leaving the lettering exposed. 
You can use just a regular old masking tape if you want, but this frog stuff really does work pretty dang well. To paint inside the lettering, simply spray across the letters in a sweeping motion at one angle, and then angle the spray the other way when sweeping back across the sign. Don't panic when you see your nice background painted over. We're going to fix this soon. And to think, you could be spending an hour painting in these letters by hand with a brush. Now, you can use that time to start making another sign. Or take a nap. But not yet. We can't let that paint dry on there. Take a large damp sponge and start wiping across the surface of the sun. You can also use a damp microfiber cloth, but be careful to avoid the paint inside the lettering. As you wipe off more and more of the paint, you can see it really starts to come to life. sides of the sign before letting it dry overnight. Doing this step last allows you to have somewhere to put your hands when you're doing all the previous steps, and it also prevents you from leaving your greasy fingerprint marks all over the paint. So this is the final product. I think I'm pretty happy with it. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, hey. Hi. I am making a sign. Oh, okay. What do you think? It looks great. How'd you make it? So I carved this part right here with the CNC machine, and then I painted the outside, sprayed the inside. You sprayed it and you didn't get any of the white paint on the red? Oh, I put like a masking tape and this had a, almost like a lacquer on the outside, so that way I could just wipe it off. It's really smart. Wicked smart? <laughs> yeah, wicked smart. <laughs>